वीडियो वन हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर इप्शिता बंसल फ्रॉम बी पी एस वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी सोनीपत हरियाणा टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द मॉड्यूल कंपेंसेशन एंड बेनिफिट्स ऑफ द पेपर स्ट्रैटेजिक ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस मॉड्यूल students will be able to understand and define compensation and understand its objective gain an overview of compensation and reward system understand how organization recognizes is it employees understand the principle theories and components of compensation compensation is one of the most important aspects of employee contract this is a pull effect and varies from one organization to other this is the factor that brings people from outside and makes them member of an organization employees are always sensitive for compensation and experience rapid changes in business practices this is more visible in industries such as information technology and information technology enabled services and to some extent banking industry also employees in industries which are stable in terms of business processes are relatively less sensitive on compensation related matters then the other category of industries above all compensation and reward practices are one of the most sought after hr practice in traditional organizations employees were paid according to the rates as decided by earlier authorities and later adjusted as per change in cost of living due to inflation and any other pressure now it is considered that employees should be paid as per the skills and value they are bringing to the company their job profile the value of their job in the organization measured through job evaluation exercise and the perception about the worth and status of the company a lot depends on the bargaining power of both the parties the job seeker and the job provider in this diagram has to be taken from the text and put on the slide pay determination stages compensation executives take a number of decisions before finalizing pay rates for executives in the organization first is job analysis and job description this is the first stage of pay determination second is identifying jobs factors skills efforts and responsibility both of them lead to evaluation of jobs and on the basis of evaluation of job that is the worth of the job in an organization pay is determined types of pay decisions there are three types of decisions the executives have to take these are decisions on pay levels pay structure and pay systems all these decisions are taken after a series of discussions while considering organizational variables and external environment that influences them these variables include economic social cultural and legal factors along with structure and workforce of the organization these are the factors that determine as how much an organization is going to pay to their workforce pay levels refer to the average pay for a job pay is ensured as much as the productivity is ensured the other important decision is related to pay structure this is the internal factor that involves arranging jobs in a hierarchy and setting pay for these jobs relating to their status within the hierarchy also it decides the amount 
and type of benefits that will be given to their employees together with pay level and pay structure which determines pay the other important factor is conformity and compliance with external and internal standards pay level decisions ensure that organization is in line with the requirements of the external environment and pay structure decisions ensure that pay for job is internally consistent decisions related to individual pay of employees an important decision is related to individual pay of employees when there is a system for same pay for same job or same position then decision is simple but when there can be difference between the pay of two employees at the same level then there are two decisions that need to be taken first how to differentiate among employees and second whether to pay for time or for output the first level can be given as individual pay determination and the second as pay method decision in the first one take home salary and benefits are decided and in the second supporting decision involves the pay treatment of some special employee groups although overall organization expect similar behavior from all the employees still compensation policies and practices may differ somewhat to marketing hr finance and operation the final decision needs to be taken involves ensuring pay not only of achieves organizational and individual objectives but also meets public policy goals principles of compensation decisions practices related to compensation decisions vary across industries some follow secretive policy as they do not share it with their employees on the other hand there are employers who take decisions on the basis of their capacity to pay and do not take decision based on logic and data analysis and disregard market factors and strategies followed by competitors and legal provisions compensation decisions should be financially viable for a company and should be meet both ends that of employees as well as organizational needs sometimes giving a say to employees in compensation decisions may benefit organizations there are some principles that are discussed here that can be followed by the organizations participative decision it is suggested that employees should also have a say in their compensation decision but it does not mean that companies should forget their economics the decision should be taken under the budget as decided by the company compliance of prevent laws and social norms national wage policy recommendations should be looked into as far as possible sometimes it is seen that there is a difference of wages within the similar job category skill or knowledge group it should be within permissible limits of law mandatory legal provisions must be strictly adhered to if the company wants to create goodwill among potential employees and stay clear of lawsuits organizations find legal provisions as compulsion on them and try to find loopholes in them such practices should be avoided as far as possible compensation decisions should be objective the reason and logic behind setting a pay rate should be clear and care should be taken to make the decisions more objective 
some parameters that help in making these decisions more objective are compensable factors, contribution margin, competencies, internal and external equity, benchmarking data, etc. Compensation decision should be performance linked. Unless and until compensation is linked with the performance, there are chances that employees do not find decisions up to mark. Thus, there should be provisions that employees should understand how their earnings are influenced by their performance. Job Evaluation or Traditional Compensation Policy In earlier times, job evaluation or job-based compensation policy was prevalent. This is the one of the oldest and most practiced compensation policy by the organizations. Under this policy, a comprehensive exercise is conducted which can be done in-house or outsourced to external agencies where jobs are evaluated in terms of their worth to the organization, in terms of how much value they are adding to the organization or their importance or indispensability for the organization. Compensation against these jobs is then fixed according to their ratings. Principle of equity Both internal and external equity are important. If these practices are followed properly in an organization, employees feel motivated and tend to stay longer with the organization. With this, an organization gets tremendous brand value as well. Compensation is the sum total of money or any other payment or reward that is provided to an employee for performing tasks and duties for achieving organizational objectives. Compensation and reward system is a complex process which includes various types of decisions such as benefits, variable pay or any other benefit and plays a significant and dynamic role in HR practices. It is based on exchange relationship between the employer and the employee. An employee has to maintain a standard of living and purchasing power. Thus, employees seek to maximize their rewards and want to get compensated fairly for their efforts, skills and knowledge. Let's now understand the theories related to compensation. First is Valence Instrumentality Expectancy Theory. VIE theory was formulated by Victor Vroom in 1964. Valence stands for value. Instrumentality is the belief that if we do one thing, it will lead to another. And expectancy is the probability that action or effort will lead to an outcome. Secondly, Porter and Lawler in 1968 had also developed a model in line with the VIE concept that suggested that there are two factors that determine the effort that people put into their jobs. The factors are the value of the reward should satisfy individual needs for security, social esteem, autonomy and self-actualization. There should be a clear linkage between the amount of efforts put by employees and the value of rewards. So, what motivates the performance of employees? The perceived link between effort and performance the perceived link between performance and outcome and the significance that is valence or value of the outcome to the person. Again the emphasis is that there should be a clear line or 
site between effort and reward and effort depends on the likelihood that rewards will follow the effort and that such rewards would be worthwhile the reward should be achievable and worthwhile compensation and benchmarking competitive pay is the key of employees happiness and retention thus companies offer competitive pay to their employees in order to retain them for a longer period of time unnecessary attrition is a cost on the company here the example of xerox is given which adopted compensation benchmarking practice and it has the following four phases planning analysis integration and action in each of these phases there are following action items that need to be accomplished planning what will be benchmarked which will be the benchmark companies how will the data be collected analysis phase are the benchmark companies better why are they better how can we apply what we have learned to our business integration phase we have to ask the questions have the results been accepted by management do goals have to be changed or modified based on results have these new goals been communicated to all affected parties action phase have the steps required to achieve the desired goals been identified is progress being tracked is there a plan for recalibration of the benchmarks broadband pay plan broadbanding is the type of a plan in which efforts are put that lead to the consolidation of existing pay grades and pay ranges into fewer but wider pay grades it consolidates a large number of pay grades and salary ranges into less number of pay grades the basic aim here is to increase the emphasis on market based pay to employees it also has the flexibility for adoption of other jobs and employee related pay components it combines different grades of pay and employees are fitted to a particular level based on their performance criteria so let's understand the components of executive compensation these are the components base salary annual incentives long term capital accumulation stocks deferred compensation arrangements supplemental benefits and prerequisites special severance and retirement arrangements these are the basic components however weightage of each component vary in each organization microsoft for example has 15% weightage to base salary whereas in apple more focus is on stock option plan let's now discuss or understand about compensation scenario in india employee compensation system operates within the framework of the legislation of a country fair compensation for work is an integral part of decent work as defined by international labor organization in india workers working in informal system and the employees at non managerial jobs are covered by wage legislation in india these wage legislations are central acts but states have the freedom to make suitable amendments without diluting the essence of the central legislation there are a few important wage legislation acts such as 
Minimum Wages Act of 1948, Payment of Wages Act 1936, Equal Remuneration Act of 1976. There are also acts which cover bonus payments, retirement benefits and social security benefits. Government employee salaries are fixed as per the recommendations of pay commission that is accepted by the government. Generally, state governments also follow the similar structure, although they are free to adopt salaries of specific occupational groups. Let's see some of the common practices in corporate world. In the corporate world, practices and trends are very different. Some of the features are given below. In general, there is a substantial difference between the compensation paid to managers and their immediate subordinates. Sometimes there is difference between compensation structure offered to project and support functions. For senior level employees, personalized and innovative salary structures are devised. Increase in basic salary is provided in the form of deferred benefits. There are certain non-tax benefits that are designed for higher level management employees. There is shift from individual incentive plan to team group based incentive plans in most of the companies. There is provision of soft furnishing allowance that is provided to purchase curtains, carpets, cutlery and crockery. Most of the companies had stopped providing cars to employees, rather they encourage buying cars and the installments are paid by the companies. This helps in reducing the burden of used cars with the companies. Companies are stopping allowances such as servant wages, etc. as it is non-taxable. The other components are conveyance allowance which varies as per the location and other factors. Companies are following practices of reimbursing car parking expenses, petrol, driver, cleaning expenses, etc. Attractive schemes are available to buy a two or four wheeler and the duration of payment varies from three to five years. Medical benefits are very common. Most of the companies provide services as reimbursement of medical bills and organize annual health checkup free for all the employees. They have tie-ups with insurance companies and hospitals in many cases. Some companies even fund higher education for their employees. Club memberships and monthly annual subscriptions to one or more club is an attractive perk. Soft loans for buying furniture, appliances and also followed in some of the organization. Interest subsidy on housing loan is also an attractive perk. To reward exemplary performance, senior executives are offered holidays abroad and full families covered. Moreover, travel and guest house bills are reimbursed in many cases for employees at medium level. Pre-employment benefits are provided to attract talent, including coverage of relocation for the family transport of personal goods, assistance in locating housing, schooling, etc. is also provided. Long-term maternity or paternity leaves are also incentives in some companies. In case of exemplary performance by senior level executives and in case of profit sharing schemes, 20 to 25 percent of the excess profit is shared. Companies are providing stock option schemes to many of their employees. So what does an equitable and fair compensation system achieve? It attracts talented employees, retains high performance employees, maintain and reinforce desirable employee behavior, recognizes employees worth, align employees efforts with the achievement of organizational objectives, Enhance cooperation and collaboration among team members. Provide social status. 
Consultancy firms such as Mercer and Hewitt consider parameters such as internal equity, industry trends, retention, organizational performance, market conditions, employee performance and market positioning for designing the compensation. Companies calculate their cost to company that is CTC which includes house rent allowance, city compensatory allowance and other allowance such as mobile reimbursement, medical reimbursement, provident fund contribution, employee state insurance contribution, food coupons, holiday packages, furnishing items etc. This is not the take home salary rather termed as CTC as it is the actual expense that is incurred by the company. So what are the common mistakes that are committed by the companies? One is that they want to attract talent in their organization and for that they offer a salary that is much higher than the norm. It starts internal inequity in the organization and creates imbalance by overpaying. It is better to adopt strategic approach while designing compensation for employees. Talent should be an important consideration and there should be a parameter as to how it will reduce, it will be measured and paid for. This will reduce inequity in the internal organizational environment. The other common mistake is not being able to understand and communicate to the employees the difference between bonus and incentive. In compensation literature, incentive is linked with some measurable outcome as a price for effort but not the bonus. We treat bonus as price for efforts. Hence, employees encourage to en expect their right as it is not linked with some individual measure. In such a scenario, employees may demand bonus even when the company may not be at some time in good financial position or have achieved the stated targets. So students, let's now summarize what we have understood in this module. Compensation decisions are very important for organizations. These decisions are linked with certain factors as internal and external environment, capacity to pay, pay rates, etc. There are differences in pay rates that are offered to senior level employees. Sometimes higher pay is offered to a person just to attract the talent. It creates internal inequity in the organization. Organizations are not very clear in terms of strategic pay plans and these results in drain of organizational resources. Decisions on fixed and variable components of compensation need to be taken after considering numerous factors such as the nature of the job, company's business goals, product life cycle, performance management system, etc. Choosing the right incentive plan is an important aspect in compensation design. It is always suggested that organization should choose that alternative which meets the cost benefit test. Thank you.